What's up, everybody? Um, it is Thursday night. Time for another episode of Thrifty Business. I'm your one host, Vegas Jay, and I realize I still got to work on some lighting in my new office here because it's kind of weird. And hey, we got an extra special co-host. Extra type. special. <laughs> extra special. Angela, how the heck are you? I am good. How are y'all doing tonight? Good. And uh, so I'm in Vegas. Remind everyone where you're at. I'm in Anderson, Indiana. Anderson, Indiana. All right. Yeah. So let's get right to our first segment that we can introduce our guest. Time for Jay's Tiki Talk. Each week I drink a different rum out of a different tiki mug and I try and match it up to our guests the best I can. And I don't I think tonight's tonight it will never be topped. So our guest is Craig Dawson. Hello, Craig. How the heck are ya? Yeah, I'm just fine and family. <laughs> Hi, Craig. Hey, Angela. So, Craig and his husband, Rick, are known as Good Dog and woof. Bad Dog. Woof, woof. And there it is. <laughs> and so, although I've used this before, it is the only tiki mug I have with a dog on it, so I figured I'd have to bring this one back because it is Good Dog, Bad Dog nice. Let me take a sip, and then I will share my rum because it's the best ever. So, Stacy and I are sitting here today, and I said, what, do I, what rum do I drink? I don't have any canadian rum and so we're just kind of spitball and she goes anything with like a mountie like the canadian police and i go well i got it mountie gay <laughs> <laughs> okay so the rum is actually mount, perfect the rum is actually mount gay but i added the ie but wait it gets better because mount gay has many rums and this one is Extra old. <laughs> oh, that's rude. Rude. Girl, you did not just call me extra old. <laughs> Mounty gay extra old. Come on now. Would it ever be any better than that? Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Look what I just might drop on the ground as <gasps> Sarah. Ooh. Don't you dare. Oh. I wouldn't dare. <laughs> Oh, good dog would hurt me. <laughs> That's an amazing mug. So, uh, oh, wait. Yes, yeah, so I was saying, Angela said she had a pretty good mug tonight. <laughs> I'm taking pre orders. Very nice. You got the Pinterest logo, <laughs> my disco ball. Got an Instagram. I did not expect a homemade mug tonight. Isn't that fancy? I got I this at our, our look, it's not even plastic. That's ceramic. I see that. That's a real deal. Someone mentioned the Bacardi uh, pour spout, and here's why that's in this bottle. If you ever move to like Tucson or Phoenix or Vegas, the one thing you don't realize until it's too late is the corks in bottles just disappear. They turn to dust well before you need them to. And so the last time I drank this rum, uh, I went to pull out the cork and it just disintegrated. So I had to dump the rum and strain it. And ugh. so I have pour spots laying around. Just a little bonus fun for everybody. Sweet. And Craig, are you drinking with us tonight? <laughs> Diet Pepsi. Diet Cherry Pepsi. Okay. Right, wild, wild Cherry Pepsi. <laughs> All right. Well, sit back, relax, enjoy the show. You know, we'll see you back here in about 25 minutes. Make sure your pants are on and you're not uh, picking your nose. You got it. And, and we won't do this one live for everybody to see. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy. Uh, all righty, let's get right to it. I, all right, what do we got? We were off for a week, and uh, I'm happy to be back. We have all kinds of fun stuff to share, starting with our of the week. Cool stuff that we have, uh, Angela and I both have sold. These are bolos, things that you should be on the lookout for. Angela, you're up first. Ladies. All right. These are, this is a set of four of, um, they're really small. They're just like little eight by six, uh, handmade cruel. Um, Sesame Street characters are from a baby nursery. Um, they came in to me as a part of a bundle deal. And so I probably have like 50 cents in them. Sold them for $28 on Etsy. And I put them there because they're not perfect. And they're, you know, they're just, they're geared towards the Etsy crowd. And use lots of good tags on that one. 
Okay, a pair of vintage Christian Dior stockings. Um, I purchased a box of 40 pair of vintage stockings at an auction for $10. So I have 40 cent or 25 cents each in them. 25 cents, Peggy. And um, <laughs> this one, so, you know, and I was like, you know, what? I don't really know what the market is. You can kind of see, and I don't know everything about stockings. You know, there's all kinds of different words and stuff, and I'm not that versed in it yet. So I went ahead and ran them as an auction just to see, um, kind of, because I have several more, and I don't, these were by far not my best pair. Um, so I still have about 20 more pairs to sell. Nice. So I'm on my way to some big money. All right. This is a 1992, obviously y'all can read, um, and, uh, Metallica concert shirt. Um, and I threw it up in the secret beach because I was like, when is too trashed, too trashed? Because um, this thing had like gaping holes under the arms. Um, the tag was missing. I thought I could probably list it for more if I could claim that it was a giant brand, but because giant is big in vintage uh, concert shirts, but that tag was missing and I didn't want to misrepresent. So um, look, main guy's face is even ripped out. I mean, it's, it's braunchy. And um, the main guy's face. I, you know what? I, in the lower <laughs> <laughs> that would be Jason Newstead, by the way. Sure. He's not yeah. the main guy. He's the bass player who's no longer in the band. And, you know, the bass player never gets any any respect in any band, <laughs> probably rightly so. But um, you know what? Um, somebody offered me 20 bucks and I said no. And I had it on at a, had my whole store on sale, didn't sell. Two days later, sold for full asking price. I mean, how badass and beat up is this shirt? So yeah. this, this is a great lesson. Like, and, you know, if, if this was, uh, you know, happy um, 4th of July, 2012, uh, Old Navy, old Navy. Shirt, no yeah. <laughs> but Metallica tore up like this, this is badass. Yeah. And this one came out of a storage unit. Uh, we didn't buy the whole storage unit, but the owner of the units called us over and said, you know, pick what you want. And he's... We, we just have different laws in Indiana that you don't have to do it. We don't have to auction everything. Um, so, you know, as soon as we saw this one, I dug a little further and we found another one. It's a Kiss Aerosmith, but it's not worth as much. So we don't really have, we have maybe 50 cents in that shirt. Oh, yeah. You found my grandfather's pants. Yes. And I sold them for $24. Um, this is the third pair of vintage polyester plaid pants that I've sold in the last couple months. Um, the other one sold for 35, but they were the, the first pair because they were the striped skinny boy, kind of like the rude boy look. Are you impressed that I knew that? that rude boy I, I am impressed. <laughs> I've been watching stuff. Um, so, you know, these, they were just killer and they were a bigger size and they, or no, this was a 30 inch. The other, the, ne the last pair that I have is like a 42 inch. So those may sit a little bit longer, but I mean, these things will absolutely melt to you in a fire <laughs> or a strong, or, you know, or warm heat. So what you got now, funny, I didn't set this up this way, but the exact same color palette is this blanket exactly. as your <laughs> pants. So I had, I had found all these San Marcos and uh beater like blankets. I finally got around to taking pictures. I decided to take them on the bed for once. And this one was a little tricky because it faces sideways instead of up and down. Mm -hmm. And so, I came at it from the angle I could come at it, and it, it seems kind of wonky when you're looking at it, but but there it is straight on. But it's and, all uh, like grr, baby. Yeah. Gotcha. So for 82 bucks, uh, plus uh, $33 on shipping, too. So Beautiful. That one's gone, and I'm excited. Still uh, haven't found one. You never found one? Oh my God. I've never, never found one. Around here, they're probably taped up on somebody's, inside somebody's double wide. Yeah, true. Uh, I got this 1960s Swedish military coat. Uh, I forget Ooh. where I got it because I had it for a while, and I just sold it for a hundred bucks. So I was happy That's to gorgeous. get it. Gorgeous. <coughs> Speaking Very of, nice. coat, I've had this Polo Ralph Lauren. It's called the Fireman Chore Coat because of the closures here, and I just sold that for 150 bucks. I think I paid 20 for it, and uh, I was hoping for a couple hundred, but had it for a while and very excited for 150. But my best sale of the Dang. week was my Carissa Sparkles sprinkled <laughs> on top baby doll dress that was listed for maybe three days, maybe two. I really? bought it at Buffalo Exchange on the East Coast somewhere. Oh, I think I was in Boston. And the girl said, well, you have good dress taste because I was buying a <laughs> And this was $15. 
and I sold it for one hundred and eighty-two dollars. So you know, and that's not even a huge, huge investment. I get shaky at ten dollars, but yeah. you know, but still fifteen if you know that the market is there and they are. And fellas, if you're not looking at dresses yet, I mean, and I'm still not nearly well versed as I could be, but I can still yank out a couple dresses every place I go. <laughs> and this last one uh, did me quite well. And it was a polyester dress. So although it looks cool, it ain't the most comfy thing. Yep. All right. Now it's time for. Ah, uh, my CD scores of the week. Each week I share with you. <laughs> My most awesome CD scores because I love teaching people how to flip CDs. Now, this week, my first one is the Walker Brothers. Yep, I don't know them either. Is anyone in the chat of the 152 live right now ever hear of the Walker Brothers? I listed it almost a year ago to the date it sold, but I paid $5.99, and it sold for $94.99. So I do not mind waiting one year to turn 6 bucks into 95 bucks. So I am very little. That. What'd you say? It's little. It's not taking up any space. Very not like true. a couch kind of thing. And the other one, everyone should know, Transformers more oh, than the eye. eye. So this is the soundtrack to the to the cartoon movie. So not the Michael Bay BS, the cartoon movie. And uh, I've sold this uh, soundtrack many, many times. So definitely mark it down. Put it in your memory banks. Uh, just sold this last one for $49. Beautiful. Oh, Lisa Bowen said her husband heard of them. Scott Walker just died. Maybe that's why it's Whoa. sold. I was not well versed in the Walker Brothers, so I'm going to guarantee that's why it just sold. So thank you. Uh, who said that? Lisa Bowen. Nice. All right. Now, if you've not taken my CD webinar, my webinar teaches you the fastest way to source, market, and sell you CDs online. It's two and a half hours of knowledge that will blow your mind. And I teach you how to conquer both thrift stores because there's one set of skills and record stores because there's a whole different set of skills. So you can get that webinar at www.flippincds.com. When you go to ring out, there is a code for half off the price. So there's a, a nice discount. But each week I give away one webinar. And so all I ask is if you have seen it or if you're in the secret beach because you have access to it, please do not answer this next trivia question. So if you've not seen it yet and you want to check it out and you might want to win it for free, if you know this answer, you can get it for free. All right, are we ready? Ready. I didn't guess it in like 14 tries. A lot of artists have been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twice. For instance, Paul McCartney is in as Paul McCartney and he's also in as the Beatles. But only one has been inducted three times. Who is it? I've seen mm. up all the parties since I already gave you that little clue. So Let's who see. is inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Museum in lovely downtown Cleveland, Ohio? Not once, not twice, but thrice. Somebody Bam. from uh, Amber Beatty from our local meetup group was there for the uh, for the most recent inductees right. into the Hall of Fame. That was in uh, New York City. So David D yeah. is our winner. Very good. The answer is Eric Clapton. He is in under Cream, the Yardbirds, and Eric Clapton solo. So, uh, wow, David D, congratulations. You have won. Do me a favor, David. Message me on Facebook. Now, last week, our winner wasn't even on Facebook. What? She is now. So, David, just in case you're not on Facebook, tikipug at gmail.com. <laughs> Yeah, I was shocked. She's like, yeah, I'm not on Facebook. I can't message you there. But she is now. She joined Facebook, so that's very cool. All right, for those of you who didn't win, and those of you who haven't taken it yet, like I said, head over. Oh, and he's already messaged me. Okay. Uh, head over to FlippingCDs.com and check it out. You will not be sorry. I promise you that. Now, not everything can be a winner. Yeah. Okay. These are duds of the week. Do not let our mistakes <laughs> be yours. Which, okay. This dress is awesome. I bought this. This was one of the very, very, very first things I listed on Poshmark. When I started selling online solo without being on Russ's store, I bought this and I think I paid probably paid 99 cents at Goodwill. It's so cool. And if you look, if you see that third picture down on the side, there were like skulls in it. I've changed. I had oh, this yeah. on 
on two different platforms. I I call I called it the Dia de los Muertos. I called it everything. And after oh my gosh, there's no so, there's no measurements in this listing. <laughs> <laughs> There There's go. measurement. There were there were measurements in my in my eBay listing though. Okay, that's how old this was. It was around forever, and somebody finally bought it for ten dollars. So my profit out of Poshmark was probably like seven eighty six, and it's gone. And it was a great dress. I originally bought it thinking I could wear it myself, but it's a size six. I'm not a size six. In my mind, I thought I could wear it. Okay. After I was on the last time, I did start reaching, branching out and getting a little more courageous maybe with uh, cross-posting, thinking I can keep up with stuff. And I did, and that wasn't an issue. It wasn't the cross-posting. But this dress did not sell for $27. It only, somebody sent me an offer of $10, and I took it. Um, it is plus-size vintage, which is rare. But this thing was heavy. It weighed over two pounds as a garment. It was a very, very thick, heavy polyester. And the belt, it just had more damage than I, you know, it seemed like it was homemade, but it wasn't homemade kind of thing. And it was just one, after I listed it, I was like, you know, I don't, if somebody offered me 10 bucks and I took it, I bought it as a bulk lot. So I didn't have a huge amount in it, but as soon as it sold for $10, half an hour later, somebody messaged me after I pulled my listing off of eBay or off of uh, Etsy. And they were like, did this sell? And I'm like, damn it. Cause I always list for higher money on Etsy. You know how I would have listed this? How? I will list this as bitchin' whatever dress eBay colors. Oh. Anytime I think finding yellow, green, blue, and red, I always call it eBay. Oh, colors. you know what? That's a really good. That's a, oh. I will remember that. Okay. And but, it kind of reminds me of the background of Max Headroom, too, for those of you. <laughs> that's kind of what I was thinking, too. It reminds me of, like, those those uh, senior pictures that we had with, like, the laser lights yeah. behind him. That's what I thought it would look like. All right, what you got? All right, so here's my dud, and it's a dud. I'm actually going to be having a little chat with uh, eBay concierge. So <laughs> yeah, I got this offer of only 11 bucks for this cool shirt. I only took it because it said buyer was in Australia, and I know I always make a few dollars on shipping, uh -oh. so it worked out just fine. However, when he bought it, he had an address in California, and I had free shipping. So I'm actually out uh, like $12. And so that kind of became a dud for me. And uh, I'm going to have a little chat with eBay how that is allowed to happen. Did I lose Angela? Oh, I, I don't hear you, Angela. I'm messaging oh, you, you. There you are. Okay. There we go. Okay. My screen just went black and I'm like, uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> panic, 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 panic. Okay. Here's my other dud. Now you just saw me sell this for fifty dollars, and I bought this one for eight ninety nine. So you would say, "Che, why is that a dud?" Why because is that a dud? I have to check inside of it when I bought it. That doesn't say Transformers. That says Crazy oh. Hits. Yeah, whoops. Womp womp womp. So make sure you always check. Cool. All right, now it's time for. Where, Where in the world did our stuff go? If you are not selling internationally, you are leaving out 7.3 billion with a B potential billion. customers. With a B. I made a, little, I made a little graphic for you. Oh, how cute is that? All right. This is a set of, um, oh gosh, I've already forgotten the name of what these are. To me, they are the ugliest set of dishes ever, but they're really worth money. They're from Vernon Kiln, um, and there's a Frontier something something. Um, uh, what we, and it was really cool because we got a set of, not a full set, but a portion of a set of these dishes. And we took, we are in one of those places where we will buy, sell, trade and a little bit of bartering. Well, this chick came in, she wanted this sofa that had been sitting here for a while. So we, we worked a deal. She brought us a ton of stuff. And normally that's not the way you want to do it. You want to, don't want to sell one thing for 20 things, but she brought in these dishes and we started looking up some of the solds and one, one piece or one set, one set out of this uh, set sold for 130 bucks. Nice. Um, this one only sold for $14, but it was our international sale. And because I have the label printer on my side, Russ has the paper printer. I went to get, you know, I send the, I, I'm the shipping department. So I sent him the PDF to print, it th print this off. We were very busy. I picked up all the packages, ran to the post office. And he comes back and he goes, did you put that label on that box? I'm like, oh, no, 
I did not. So it's one of the perks of living in a small town. We printed it off. He made a mad dash. <laughs> And, and it was still sitting on the counter because our, ours is one of those nice post offices where you just walk in and, and we get the first, you know, there's other eBay sellers in town. They just, everybody piles their stuff there and um, we really have no complaints from our post office. They All even right. loaned him the tape. Mine you've already seen, but I wanted to share with you because I haven't shared uh, this country before. And I went to Bombrouge, I think, Bombrouge, Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. That was the $150 coat uh, that Ralph Lauren uh fireman's uh chore coat so that is off heading to europe so again if you're not offering international sales why not it is super duper easy each yeah. week i sell a minimum of 10 things internationally a minimum and i have happy customers all over the world and i have no more headaches shipping worldwide than i do domestically i i, I have some no. but i have some domestically too i've had a package lost to LA. I live three and a half hours from LA. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it happens. That's called business. So don't don't stress it too much. All right. Now it's time for Woo. Close Encounters with Thrifty Kind, Kind, Kind. I've had some great ones today, so we keep throwing this back in there. And uh Angela's got one too. Little fun things that happen while we're out and about thrifting. All right, that just looks like a paper bag, doesn't it? Just a grocery sack. The The craziest part is this is the coolest thing I, that, in my opinion, has ever walked into our store. We are a business that we have a, you know, we buy almost anything. And a guy showed up on Saturday and he said, hey, I got some stuff in my car. Could you come look at it? And my husband walks out and he sees this supermarket grocery sack. And he was like, how much do you want for the bag? And he was like, well, I want to sell you what's in it. And Russ is like, okay. So it turned out to be a great deal. The guy comes in, he's got some really cool stuff that Russ is already making money on that deal. The cool thing is that this is from Hoosier Supermarket. And this is from the like late 50s, early 60s. That's the location that we're in now. And we love to collect any kind of historical memorabilia from around surrounding businesses um, the or the neighborhood. Russ's family has three generations in this little neighborhood of this of this town. And this was a General Motors town. So like all the little neighborhoods, there's Meadowbrook and Ironwood. And, you know, there's a whole bunch of. Okay, that's one of the things we got from you. Oh, yeah. This is one of the other things that we got from that guy. All these cool soapies, like the Frankenstein and everything. But Jason, do you have the picture of the baseball team? Yep. All right. This um, this picture is our building. That's the Hoosier supermarket in the background, and that picture is from 1963. And now the co another cool thing is that people from the neighborhood come in all the time, and they talk about, oh, I remember when this was, yada, yada. And this guy was talking about it, and I said, you know what? We have a picture of a baseball team. And he said, I played for Hoosier Market. And so the guy's looking at it, and he's like, and I said, I should, you know what? I saw this picture on a Facebook group. Let me show it to you. And he doesn't do Facebook. He's in his seventies. And he comes in, he was like, well, that's me. And that's my brother. And my dad was the coach. And it was so great because his eyes lit up and it was just exactly that feeling that we want to have in our store of, you know, we're here for the neighborhood. Um, it's all about memories. We sell a lot of antiques and vintage and retro and stuff. And it's, you know, it's, it's, we're not just always selling a product. Sometimes it's just a feeling. And it was really cool because at his age, that guy could name everybody but one in this photo. Impressive. But look at that badass car. My I'm sorry, are we supposed to be PG at this hour? No, it's quite all right. That's My a badass dad, car. He was, <laughs> stare, uh, he was staring at a picture on the wall. It was an antique store in the town we grew up and lived in. My mom goes, what are you looking at? And he goes, I'm looking at my dad and his football team. So they <gasps> have a picture of like a 1930s football squad from my high school. And my dad just happened to look right at his dad. So that's pretty cool. Oh, that's crazy. That happened to Russ with his granddad. He he was looking at an auction online. And he was like, I have to go to this auction on Sunday because that's my grandpa's picture right there. Oh, that's and awesome. I was like, that's awesome. All right. So uh, this past weekend, I was in Portland hanging out with my wife, Stacy, and our friends, Eric and Stephanie. And we uh, went to an estate sale. And just to give you kind of the level of the estate sale, here's He's one. beautiful. And here is a creepy clown. Yes. And so I said, all right, I'm going to go out and look in the garage because there's always good stuff at estate sales in the garage. Amen. And so the garage is the building to the right. The other building out back, the outbuilding is all by itself. And I said to Stacy, I go, let's walk back there. 
and it was super muddy, but I kind of worked my way in and I go, oh yeah, for sure people have been killed in this building. <laughs> and she said, oh, like Friday the 13th? And at that second, I looked down and there was a <laughs> laying right there next to me. I mean, you, you think- You win for it. like the creepiest. Yeah. You think that is the best. It. She says, you mean like Friday the 13th? I look down and pick up a machete. I'm like, yep, just like that. I said, I told you people have been killed in this building before. <laughs> you can't script this kind of stuff. We got a couple good things, but this picture is the best thing we got out of this. And this was a one and done. She took this shot. I said, perfect. <laughs> that crochet clown would have been perfect for Etsy, though. Oh, just yeah. Just to point that out. Yep. All right. Now it's time for... Our thrifty tip of the week. Little tips and tricks to help when you are out sourcing. Oh my gosh, why is that so big all of a sudden? Oh, they got really big. All right, this is our look. This, the show. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, from last Sunday at our local eBay meetup group. Ooh. And I asked them for thrifty tips because I don't thrift that much. You know, we source within our store, we go to auctions. Um, so I asked them for a thrifty tip. And uh, Pam Reed, she's sitting there in the blue shirt. You'll see her at eBay open. She said, you know, there's like this, this sibling rivalry thing going on that wasn't really planned. But it's funny because one member will be at uh, a Goodwill in somebody else's neighborhood. And she'll be like, hey, I found this at Mike's store. Mike will be like, oh, I found this at your store. So, you know, and I said, what's your thrifty tip? And she said, you know, this rivalry that we have, it's, it's a joke and it's fun. But she said, it's made me a better seller. I she like said, because it. it's opening my eyes to other things that I haven't seen before. All and right. I was like, that that's pretty cool. All right. Yeah. I can't believe all the clowns. Craig, Craig hates clowns. You know that? Here's my source and tip. So uh, we were in Portland at a Goodwill, and a guy was going through the artwork like he owned the place, and he was definitely looking for specific things. And I saw him pass by these two. And he obviously doesn't know the appeal of vintage, uh, kitschy 60s art. So I reached past him. He kind of grunted at me. But my tip is, don't be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> when you're six foot 70, you can do that. But I pulled them out, and I think I paid eight for the pair. So I wanted to show you what they sell for. So I went looking today, and here's that exact same pair that sold for $38.38. .38. And then I looked at the seller, the Velvet Pineapple. That's my good friend. That's summer. I know. <laughs> a famous thrifty encounter. My little graphic today ends up being one of my buddies here in Vegas. I'm like, what? That's crazy. How, how weird is that? But yes, keep your eyes open for gravel art and don't let anyone intimidate you to try and think they own the section. Yep. All right. Clowns will sell. Yeah. Uh, speaking of clowns, where's my... Oh, there it is. <laughs> now it's time for you have got to be shipping me little tips and tricks what to do and what not to do when it comes to shipping oh just let people know what you do that's 19 boxes of bubble wrap 19 so someone just dropped it off because they knew you needed it the irony they came from a thrift store shut up you shut up. That's true. Uh, the guy from the local uh, Christian thrift store called us because we've gone back and forth. You know, we we buy when they have too much furniture. We'll buy directly out of the back room, you know, just to clear their warehouse so they can keep taking donations of the things they really need, like clothing, because they are community based. So he called and he's like, hey, I got all this bubble wrap. You guys need it? I'm like, well, heck yeah. He shows up with a trailer of it. And I gave away half of it to our our, uh, our meetup group because he said I have more. And this came from a medical office. So if you know people in the medical field, Keep them on your list. Oh, heck yeah. Good, clean, good bubble wrap. Now, as I was uh, talking with Stacey, I'm like, oh, shoot, I don't have a shipping tip. And then she gave me one, which I, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's awesome. Stacey's the best. So if you've ever ordered these from Bath and Body Works, they apparently didn't have the greatest shipper in the world because what they would do is they would just throw them in the box with no padding, and then inevitably one of these would break open. These are the things, if you don't know what this is, these are the refills for the things you plug in, and so it, your house smells pretty. Well, they finally hired someone competent because now when they ship them, they put them in these heavy-duty Ziploc bags. So the tip, mm. if you're sending stuff that could leak, make sure you do this. I never, ever use bags except for when I'm shipping some sort of liquid that has a uh, – it, it could leak. I'm trying to think of the Pensity? word. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Yay, so, Jamie. So <laughs> Bath and Body Works, and so keep that in mind when you're shipping things that are liquid. 
All right, now it's time for. Our eBay tip of the week, little tips and tricks to help you with your eBay selling. What do we got? What do we get? You go. Oh gosh, I can't see it. Sorry. Um, mine was and here's here's again irony. Pay attention to what's on the screen. This has been there. I don't know how long it's been there. It's right there. When you print your shipping label down at the bottom on the very right hand side, it says. I can't read it. It's blurry. But <laughs> if you click on it, it's, oh, it says order free supplies. It will take you right to the eBay USPS priority co-branded co shipping supplies. My mind blown. I'm like, it's been there the whole time. And, you know, you just get in a hurry because you're like, I got to ship the next thing. Leave feedback, move on, you know, wash, rinse, repeat. I'm done. That was it. Uh, and I will tell you, I didn't know that until I saw your tip. So I'm excited because I usually just Google oh, it when nice. I want them. Yeah, that's my thing too. I yeah, Google how to find stuff. I love that. All right, here's I, get to the I, I, I actually messed up. So here's my tip. All right. I sell this mug in bulk, meaning I always have like three or four. I don't, <coughs> excuse me, it's brand new. I don't bother ever retaking photos of a brand new product. However, since this is an item that is glazed and then fired, I should check before I ship because I'm getting a return. Now I'm a little like, come on, really? They said, hey, this mug is chipped, okay? It isn't the one in the picture, obviously. It's not a chip. It's actually an imperfection in the glaze. Yeah. That's what's happening there. And I did say, I I'm happy to take your turn, but let you know, this mug has been discontinued in this color, and I actually sold to you at a discounted rate. So it's a great deal if you want to keep it. If not, no biggie. I will pay for the return. I screwed up. So definitely the tip is make sure if you're selling multiples of the same thing, to actually give it the once over with your eye before sending it out. Because yeah. I probably would have said to the customer, oh crap, there is a defect in the glaze. Do you still want it? So that was my bad. I mean, uh, every right to That's get good. that. Concern. That's good customer service. Yep. All right. Next week, we're going to have one heck of a show because it's kind of crazy. Oh, yay. We'll put all the details now. But if you're in the thrifting board, look for the post about the <laughs> vintage Levi's jacket. It, it became our own soap opera, and uh, Cheryl was the unfortunate end of the soap opera. She was the end that didn't go so well. But it went well enough that she's going to be on the show, and she's an amazing uh, uh, amazing member of the thrifting board. And, and her husband, Rick. Yeah, and she was actually going to buy the jacket to flip it, and then the seller canceled on her. And the, and the seller was also a member of the thrifting board. So we're near the whole sorted story <laughs> next Thursday. So mark your calendars gonna be crazy one of the craziest stories i forgot to tell my wife and she read it today or last night and she goes oh my god this is nuts i go i know it. yeah <laughs> all right real quick just found out today ebay open is sold out but there is going to be a waiting list so if you didn't get your tickets get on the waiting list right now and if you're coming and you haven't booked your travel yet here is a list of events sunday night we have the ass juice party of the double down Ass juice is way yummier than it sounds. My mother will. <laughs> on chat tonight, she's playing cards with her girlfriends. Uh, Monday, if you're in the Secret Beach, we have the big Secret Beach Bash where we take over a whole bar, have a big old luau pig roast, and the band play for us. Tuesday night for everybody, it's the Tiki Party at Frankie's Tiki Room. Wear your best moo or Hawaiian shirt. And then Friday is the Thrift Class on steroids. I've got a lot of questions if the if it's up to order yet to secure your spot. It will be next week. So what the thrift class on steroids is, we have myself and nine other instructors to give you uh, a couple hours of classroom time and then a couple hours of thrifting time, including bins. So you get 10 instructors of a variety of specialties in one class. So you, you don't ever find that anywhere else. So uh, all that signups and stuff will be coming up. Uh, signups for yeah. Ask You. Tiki just show up, but details and locations and stuff will be more forthcoming. All right. That's enough of our shenanigans. Let's hear it. I want to see him. Yeah, hold on. Let me get it all set up. Uh, I got to get the uh, where is, oops, where, there we go. <laughs> and oh, Come on. And there we go. I hope everyone saw Craig's um, um, posting. If if, if you're not a member of Craft, Craig, you know Craig is. Craig and Rick have the the other group in Canada. 
And he had a great video Tuesday yep. night. And so tonight we're going to talk to, oh, I thought we were talking to Craig Dawson. What is that? Hello. 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 My name is Lynn Mass. Well, hello, Lynn. How are you? No. My name is Lynn Mass. Well, hello, Lynn Mass. No, really, it's me, Lynn Mass. <laughs> I got my hair done for this and everything. Oh, it's so pretty. Thank you. Lynn Mass from Ooh, the North Shore Academy of Beauty Culture. <laughs> can, you, can you see that? In Lynn Mass. Did you this say culture? Where, beauty culture. Culture. All culture. Right. Culture. <laughs> culture in Lynn Mass. <laughs> so, so I, I, was, yeah. uh, I was planning on uh, interviewing Craig about Max Sold. Am I going to interview you about uh, No, no. He'll be beauty. Here. Because I sponsor him and Two Dogs Digs on Wednesday nights, he said I could come on and say hello. And I've got my script is supposed to. Do you pop out at parties? Are you? <laughs> no, that's what made me the vision. Wait. Oh, sorry. Um, hi, I'm Lynn Mass from the North Shore Academy of Beauty Culture. I have one of my favorite tips for you. Beauty tip number sixteen: the eyes are the windows to the soul. The nose is the front porch. So always remember to keep the front porch clean. Thank you so much, Lynn Mass, North Shore County Beauty Culture. Oh my Thank God! You so I'm out of here. Bye bye. Bye, Lynn. Bye, Lynn. <laughs> oh, yes, uh, I didn't want to ruin the surprise, but Lynn Mass wanted to stop by and say hello. Oh, and we have another surprise guest. Hi, Rick. And the filler. <laughs> it's good dog. Hi, Rick. Hi, we don't get to see Rick too often. I'm He's shy. shy. Oh, I, I'm not used to being He's shy. shy. But I'm not. Get out. Yeah, he's back. I'm yeah. back. That was Filling a good cut. Uh, was... Street filler duties fulfilled. <laughs> just like the Academy Awards. Just like the that Academy That was beautiful. Award. Hey, Craig, that was a pretty sweet shirt you were wearing. Where can I get one? <laughs> Amazon. Nice. Two dogs, two dogs duds on Two Amazon. dogs duds. <laughs> it is. Got it. So I'm sitting here enjoying my Mountie Gay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Right, so, uh, look, everyone should know Craig by now. Craig, Craig's the man. Craig runs Craft. And what's Craft stand for, sir? The Canadian Resellers and Fantastic Thrifters Group on Facebook. If you're Canadian because you have special needs and wants, <laughs> <laughs> I can never help you, but but Craft can. And if you're in Canada and you, you need a Facebook group to join, definitely join Craft. It is the one, the only, the best Canadian. Facebook group. Even out there. if you don't have special needs, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> and even if you're not Canadian, you're welcome too. We I am extra special and I'm not Canadian. I'm in the group and I learn a lot. We've got over a thousand members. We've got 80% of them are Canadian though. So yeah. they will welcome us Americans. Yes. They're very friendly folks. We wonderfully welcome you. Yes, we do. All right, but today, oh, real quick, just a real uh, little, little housekeeping note. Uh, Seeker Beach members, don't forget. Uh, right after this, we have a bonus show with Craig, uh, Tidepool. So uh, when we're done here at the top of the tower at Oregon Secret Beach, I know there's going to be somebody who goes, where's the link? It's pinned to the top. So get right to the Secret Beach. The link is in the post with this graphic. All right. So let's talk Max Soul because, look, we almost all sell on eBay, or maybe we all do who's watching. Uh, a lot of us sell on Etsy, Mercari, Posh. But you went out and you found another way to sell. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Well, we've actually been selling for 30 some odd years. And one of the things that we've done is both sourcing and selling. We've actually gone to live auctions. And Angela was saying that she goes to auctions as well. So we've mm -hmm. actually consigned things into auctions before. And we've purchased and resold from auctions before. Um, and a couple of years ago, we happened to have found, I think we, we might have seen it on Facebook or somebody gave us a link and said, hey, have you ever heard of this Max Sold place? And we'd never heard of it before. And so we went on there and we actually started buying uh, sources yeah. from Max Sold. And um, they were something that was like, this is kind of interesting. And we checked into it a little bit more and realized that at that point, they were mainly based on estate sales. So they would, you could hire them, they would come into your place and clear out your whole estate. But they started expanding about two years ago into the reseller market and giving options for people like us to reach a vast majority of people 
through online auctions that all end in one night. So it's like doing the live auction, consigning it, but you end up consigning your own stuff to them and then they run the auction for you. So we started this, uh, 2017 was our first auction and we are literally ending our, I think it's our 10th one tonight. So we've been doing nice. it now for almost a, a year, a little over a year and a half. So. Awesome. And when you did the first one, um, so there's no work. You just give them the stuff, right? I mean, you give them the... Well, there's two ways that you could actually do things with Max Sold. You can actually hire them to come in and take all the photos for you. If you do, they charge you a flat fee. It's uh, $700. They will come in and take pictures. So if you have an estate and you want to get rid of it, that's a great way for you to do it. Um, but otherwise, the reseller model that we use is we take our own pictures, we write our own descriptions up, and then post them onto Max Sold. And it can be done one of two ways. You can either use their cloud option and you work off of any desktop, or they also have an iOS option if you're on Apple and you just take your picture with your iPhone or your iPad, type the, the uh, description in there, and you can have three or four or five people if you all have all on it at the same time filling out this form so that you've got a bunch of auctions or a bunch of items listed in your auction. In that case, they charge you 30% or $300, whichever is the greater amount. So when you put the items up there, if you put 100 items up and you sell them for 20 bucks a piece, that's $2,000. They'll charge you $600. That's the 30%. Okay. If you sold them for $1,000, they'll charge you $300. If you have an, an auction where you didn't really put the best stuff up there, and you sold them, let's say for 600 bucks, then you'd still be paying the, the $300. So it's really, you're aiming to put a hundred or so item or lots up minimum, and you aim to put things you hope will get 30, 40 or $50. Right. If you put a bunch of stuff up you think is not worth anything, you're gonna get nothing. So you're still gonna owe them the $300. So what we try to do is we try to build a whole mix of things. We try things that have been on Etsy, have been on eBay. We try things that we've sourced that we thought we found this that wasn't expensive, but we wanna flip it. We do glassware where we don't wanna pack it. But the auction we're having tonight actually on Max Sold is one where we focus solely on toys. So we have 163 lots and it's Ooh, all this one's gonna be good. Um, yeah. And we actually had some people who thought we were crazy because we put toys in this, vintage toys. Wait a minute, we have yeah, wait, let's set that record straight, but. <laughs> but, yes, the, the, real, the reason <laughs> the but is because you start everything at a dollar. So no matter what the item is gonna be, it starts with zero bids and goes to it for your first bid for a dollar. So if nobody likes your item, you're gonna go for a dollar. But if people do like your items, they're gonna bid over and over. And the great thing about this is the thing we, one of the things we love the most is it has a soft close. What that means is in any item, you're never going to potentially be outbid because the time ends on you. You actually, as soon as somebody bids again, it adds another two minutes to it. And I see Scott was asking a question about who ships the stuff. Well, that's different. Maxold is more of a local and a pickup place. So you arrange for people to come by your place of business or storage unit. We know people who do it out of storage units on a regular basis. We know people who do it out of their houses and use their garage. We know people who use like who rent space for it. Um, so there's lots of ways that you can actually do the pickups. We use our warehouse, we use our warehouse space. Anyone do it out of a van down by the river? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, nice. You could actually do it from a van down by the river if you wanted to, as long as you had an address that somebody knew where they could meet to pick you up. Now, here's a map that Craig has shared with us. So it's not everywhere, but as you can see, you know, and we have thrifters who watch the show, who are in the thrifting board, who are in craft at all corners of North America. Yeah. So it isn't covering everybody yet, but as you can see, it's quite heavy in a lot of the main uh, uh, you know, cities and areas in the United States. So, if Dennis Weddle from North Dakota is watching this, I'm sorry, Dennis. You're you're never <laughs> poor Dennis. Well, even unfortunately for you in Vegas, it's not in Vegas as of I know. No. I mean, I'm dying to to do this based on the successes I've seen you have. But so I I, uh, I here's the list just to read it real quick. Uh, is that fully in there? So Atlanta, Boston, Tri-State, New York, DC yep. Metro. Mid Atlantic, Pennsylvania, Philly, Allentown, Delaware, Houston, Austin, San, Austin, San Antonio, Dallas, Phoenix, Seattle, Spokane, Denver, Cleveland. There's my mom. Uh, <laughs> Miami, Orlando, Bay Area, 
uh, Ontario, British Columbia. So what I think we got to do, Craig, is have my mom do one of these, and then we'll do a show with her. That would be amazing, especially yeah. if she buys everything for a quarter. <laughs> so even if she sold everything for a dollar, she'd still make money. But <laughs> um, yeah, they uh, they well, started out years ago um, uh, with a in a Canadian base, and they used to actually be called UBID Local. And then they when they started expanding, they expanded into the U.S. They, if I've got this correct, I might be wrong, but I, I close to correct. They started purchasing some local uh, online outfits because you can go out there and find online people that are doing it or local people in your own market. So yeah. that's one thing as well is we wanted it's it's not only max old, but for those of you who may not be in a max old area, take that extra shot to look in your paper and find something that might be a localized auction or an auction in a bigger city near you. Take a look at that auction, not only for you just to potentially source from. But also think about it as a way that you might actually consign items because that's what we did before we found Max Sold. We had a, a live auction we used to consign to. Now we stopped doing that. And in fact, we know a couple other people who used to consign to this one live person and he's lost all of their business because we all do Max Sold now. <laughs> well, you know, we we do this a lot in our business. Um, we, we've, con we've consigned with other auctioneers. We've actually hosted auctions out of our business. It, but you know, online auctions are, are the future. And um, we, through the winter time, when we're in the crappy weather, we will source that way. And Jason can tell you, <clears throat> I can come in and like, oh yeah, we picked up the sofa for a dollar. Yeah. You know, which, but, you know, but, but the thing is, is that Max sold is not in our area yet. And I'm anxious for them to get here because I think it's going to make all the other auctioneers in the area step up their game because there's only a couple of them doing what we're doing, what Max sold does. And they're doing it on a little bit different level. So I think Maxold is has I mean they're 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 thinking out in the future. Yeah, and the and, interesting, and the interesting I can't wait for them to get here. I have spoken to them about looking at expansion in markets where they're not in. And really, there's a couple of things that are a little tricky. And eBay's in has to deal with this kind of thing as well, where um, they are looking at taxes in every single region as differently. So when Maxold right. has to launch in a market. They have to do all the full compliance Ooh. with an individual state and or even local. So you have places where they may have to file for two different business tax sets to build in. So what they've said is if they're in a market, generally like a state or um, a province, so Ontario, mm -hmm. BC, or some of the states <laughs> you've seen on that list, like in California, if they have 12 or so people interested in doing an auction, in a city they haven't been to, they're gonna actually look and talk to you about growing and going into that market. Okay. If they have a state that they're not in right now, they kind of need to have a commitment of close to 30 to 40 auctions to happen in a year because they've got to invest thousands of dollars into building the infrastructure. Oh, for sure. Now yeah. the infrastructure not being the online side, but just with all the taxes and compliance and everything like yeah. that. But what that's great is if you happen to be a member of a group, and you have an eBay meetup, you could actually meet up with members of your group. Like per perfect example, if they're in Cleveland, you could talk to other people in your meetup group and say, well, mm -hmm. wait a second, what if we all did one a month over the next year? Would we all be willing to potentially commit to this? And then Max Sold will talk to you and be able to get you driving listings uh, or driving addresses for them to have emails so that you actually get bidders. Yeah. In the markets where it's very active, it, we get we have bidders who have driven to our place to pick up from two to two and a half hours away from our office. Yep. So we're in Toronto. We've had people come from Kingston, from Peterborough, from Niagara Falls, and drive in the middle of the winter two hours to pick up something that we put in our auction for, and they got it for oh, seven dollars. Yeah. yeah, you know we can. You know we factor that in. We factor in buyer's premium. We factor in distance. How far? You know we've got to put something in the trailer. We've been on both sides of it, and it is it's a great great vehicle now I don't to know about and, <laughs> huh? hey, on this map there is a dot kind of where <laughs> angela <laughs> is but that's not on the list anymore anyway i'm in indiana so did you say well, oregon not right in indiana that's not on the list anywhere it may have been that they had one estate person do something in there and then nothing else ended up happening in the market that's yeah, how that looks like lafayette market. that's then, like purdue university is that's and then the other right. two yeah. that are like you know down to the right that that like Cincinnati Dayton, but that wasn't yeah. either. Well, the way that you want, if you want to do a search, it's very simple. If you go into maxold.com on the internet, 
and you go, you've got a, the tab up at the top, it says locations, and it'll show you everywhere that they're pretty active in. You can click on a link there, and in some cases, you'll, the link will take you to an auction that happened a couple of years ago. That's because that's the only person who's tried to do it in that market. So okay. if you, yeah, right where you've got, not this, yeah, location. So if you click on that location, you'll see there's Vancouver, Victoria, London, Kingston, all of those. You go down into the USA and you'll see, you can click on any of those. And you also can see if there's auctions in your area and you can start, I mean, if you're not a hundred percent familiar with them yet, then that's the way to even take a look at what's there. If they're close enough to you to be an hour drive away, you never know what you might be able to find on this. And well, again, you might also find someone who who can sign for you. I am shocked that it's in Montana, which I would surprise me. Not <laughs> Vegas, it's in two places in Montana. What? I mean, not well, Chicago in that, or Indy in either. Case, yeah, and in some of those cases, those have been built based on an estate company coming yeah. in to do sales, uh, not, a, not okay. the reseller Makes side. Sense. That's where it, the growth seems to be happening quite a lot, though. If you go onto their site and you'll see in a number of markets, it lists like downsizing or estate sale, and then you'll see reseller, 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 reseller. So you know that a lot of people like us are starting to take more and more advantage of them because... It's so uh, literally, I mean, the one thing I've said about it is it's great. We have one night, we're doing this tonight. We have a pickup on Sunday. We're gonna get rid of possibly 200 to 300 to 400 items. We're gonna have it all picked up and out of our place in three hours. We don't have to pack it. And then two Isn't weeks now, we get a check. It's great. <laughs> you, know, you pretty much take some pictures and they put them on and you're, you, you're using their platform. And you know, if they're gonna do that work, I, we will pay for that. Yeah, you know, it means I don't, I don't have to pack, especially all the breakable stuff. And you know, I don't know if you've experienced it, but when we look at it, we're, you know, we don't look at, oh my gosh, that only sold for seven dollars. We look at the bottom line. Yes, we look at it that exactly as well. You know, the this current, was crap sitting on a shelf, and now I have eight hundred dollars. The current auction that we've got, we have things, and there's always shockers too. Like Jason's oh, got yeah. our hits and misses, and it's like some of these things have just shocked the crap right out of us as to what we got for them and vice versa. And we've got oh, a yeah. couple tonight that are just like, we're literally going, oh my God. Yeah. There's always that sting that, oh, that was worth so much more. But then I'm like, oh, but that's a reseller. So I can feel it here too. You know, I'm yeah. like, oh, okay. Somebody's going to, you know, we got it for nothing. They paid 20. We're good with that. You know, it's not so always about the, me making the dollar. Here's now on the, on the buying end, Here's what you can get for a dollar. So thank you, Diana Fleming, for sending this picture to me. She got this for a dollar. But you can you can find great stuff, yep. but you also can sell great stuff. So let's go through some of uh, Craig's, uh, some good things that sold and some not so good things that sold. So the first thing is uh, this uh, MCM, oops, I, don't, I have Craig on the screen, sorry. Uh, Mid-Century Modern, Pop Modern Artist Work Trolley. So the work trolley we found on the side of the road, it was being thrown out. So we, uh, how much did that cost? Nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. You found oh it. Oh my God, it's it. gorgeous. I found it. Rick hated it. I said, no, it'll clean up. It'll do, it'll do well. We'll probably get $100 for it and we'll put it on max sold. And we got $315 and the guy was thrilled. Wow. Absolutely thrilled with it. Wow. I love uh, that. That is, that is cool. Yeah, we and again, yeah, we we put a few more in, uh, pieces of information in the title and things like that. You can be as little as you want we have seen things up there that say record album and then have a picture of the front of a record album and then the the description says record album so Craig, so you no get to you get to write your own thing. you're writing your own titles you're writing your own titles and your own conditions the one thing they say Good kind stuff. of like ebay you want to watch that you say great condition because your great condition yeah. not somebody else's great condition so you try and be as factual as you can be how many photos do you get? Uh, you get as many photos as you want, too. That's just it. There's nothing, no limits. Oh, nice. So you can I do like 60 that. photos if you've got something like that. These yeah. shirts are a little short for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were at a bazaar. These were on the clearance center. Rick didn't want me to buy them either. I paid $5 for them, sold them for 95 bucks. Uh, and again, not it's not hard to ship, but it was just something we thought, well, we'll put these in here. And if I can make 40 or 50, that's fine. We made 95. That was great. Next one you got is nativity. The nativity oh set that was that threw us like that was two dollars, and wow. it went up to hundred and forty-five dollars. And the funny thing was, the day before the auction ended, we found another one exactly like that. So we have Get one. Out. Yep, 
for seven ninety nine out of now, do you get do you get to meet the buyers? Yes, that at, we had, and the oh, woman the was ecstatic. She was ecstatic getting that. She was so happy. It was something she had when she was a child or something like that. So now, awesome. speaking of that, so here's my here's my question: If someone shows up to pick up their nativity set or their really short chairs, and they just don't think it is as you represented it, represented it, what yeah. happened? It's really simple. Uh, because Max Sold has collected the money, you actually just say, thank you very much. You just have to file a, an issue with Max Sold. And when you close the auction yourself, the pickup day, you have to file a report as the seller that says, we had this person who did not want this. And then Max Sold will take care of giving them the refund. So it's really that you don't have to fight with people or anything like that. Sorry? Have you ever had that problem in the 10 auctions you've done? Uh, we've had three things that have been problems. One of them was we took a picture and forgot to take the picture of the back of something, which had a big chip in it. And the person who wanted mm -hmm. it said it's going to be very visible from the back. It was a 20 or so, $25 um, Bible stand. I literally said, well, we got two options. You can, like, you don't have to take it and you can, the full money can come back from Max Sold. Or how about I give you 10 bucks right now? And she was very happy at getting the 10 bucks back. We actually had her sign on her on the sheet that she received a ten dollar refund. Yeah. And then when we filled out the max uh, sold form, the pickup form, we said item number forty two. We were given a ten dollar refund on, so that yeah. they couldn't come back. And when say, they're in the when they're right there, this crap yeah. is leaving with you. It's yeah. not staying. It's going yeah, to go. Had a, the <laughs> yeah. other two issues have been with the same woman. <laughs> <laughs> we, and we, yeah, we don't, we don't, want to see, when we see her name on a, a list, we go, oh God, not her again. And she buys stuff for a dollar and then basically feels every single thing about it to try and get money back out of it. So, but the great other thing about Max Sold is I got to tell you, some people don't pick up their stuff. You still keep the money. They abandon it. Ooh. It's considered so abandoned. Then completely abandoned so, so our last auction we had a woman who had about 90 dollars worth of stuff and she did not show up and she abandoned it so we get to resell it she also didn't or you could donate it for a tax you could donate it yeah uh this yeah. big bird puzzle the reason we decided that we were going to put this into max old is because the cover was disgusting it was covered in nicotine yummy so <laughs> yeah, boxes. Yeah. Very, well, I didn't want to sell something that boxes very stained on eBay because I thought this was going to be returned. Again, the guy who got it was thrilled. He didn't care about the box. He just wanted to see birth butt. That's great. So, I'm not sure what's next. Uh, the chair, two little chairs. These were something that, again, this is just mid-century modern seems to do very well for us yeah. in the market. So they ended up going for $111. Again, it's like a $10 buy that we picked up out of Savers. Nice. Love it. Oh, who's going to wrestle with you, brother? <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, wrestling lots do amazing for us. That's the, that's the interesting thing. And this was actually a strange one. We had about 10 of these black and white photos from old, old wrestlers. One is a Hawaiian guy, I can't remember his name. And I think it was Captain Lou Albano on the one. The belts are plastic toy children's belts. And I can't believe that for the life of me, we got $56 on that. This was, yeah. it's like, again, with auctions, you get those two people that kept going. Every time it hit a number, it would get extended and extended That's and extended. All it takes. And you're just going, keep extending this, yes. Question: How do you have to keep an item before you can re freely relist it? You don't. If they don't, if they miss their pickup, they've lost it. Yeah. So if you, if somebody, your pickup window is set as one to three p.m. and they don't show up at three p.m. and they didn't call Max Sold to say I'm stuck in traffic, my car broke down, uh, my uncle died, whatever it is, it's yours and you can do whatever you want with it. Right wow. away. There's usually one pickup day. This is this is a perfect example. This trunk we bought for twenty dollars. It went for 80 and we were happy about that. Remember, we're, Max Old is taking us 30%. So from our side, that's still a $56 thing. That's a $30 like profit for us. It was huge. We thought it might go for more, but the seller didn't show up. So we got to keep their $80 or their 70% of the $80. And then mm -hmm. in another auction, we put it back up. We just turned the picture so that it was a different way in case somebody saw it and thought it was... <laughs> <laughs> the same thing but look what happened on the second auction it became our miss Ooh. we had an 80 dollars thing that sold for 16 dollars the next time around isn't that crazy that was wow. like we were there, there's there, there's proof right there that 
when you do auctions and think about it from an eBay standpoint, it's got to be something special that people are going to be definitely want to fight for because if you don't have the right eyes on it that week, yeah. this this trunk is going to be bid up. It, it sold once for 80 and once for 16. Same piece. The wrong eyes were on it that second time. Yeah, the only one bidder came back. <laughs> one thing we try and do a lot more of right now, though, is we try and actually uh, post on like Kijiji or Craigslist links to these things so that we're actually advertising for free as well to try and get more people in there. Instagram. Um, it can also use the buttons. Right? That, yeah, there's also so buttons on every single item share. when you're building it. You can just click and post it to Facebook and post it to Twitter. So it's great ways to actually help share it and get other people brought in. The candlesticks were something that, again, we thought would be a great sale at, and they went for 10 and we we thought they'd be like 50 60 $70. It's, it was ridiculous. So uh, yeah, there's right. a... Yeah, the other the other losses are in the same area. They're all like two or three dollars. You could probably flip through them really quickly. Um, they're just things that just didn't go for what we thought they would. And part of the reason is there just wasn't that two or three or four bidders that were up against it for that one time. The car display, we've actually sold three of these, one for 24, one for six, but we sell them on Facebook for 40. <laughs> so we have a bunch of them. So it was just a stock thing that we thought we'd put in. So you, and as, again, as Angela says, we look at the whole thing and on average between our nine auctions, we've averaged well over, tw I think $2,500 per auction. That's nice, that's good. So we're clearing like close to $2,000. So in nine to 10 auctions, there you go. There's $15,000 that we've cleared. I, I know they gave a, uh, Craig, they gave an average or a, a minimum amount of items you had to list. How many do you? Do you average? There is no. We could never. There is no minimum. You can list one. We've seen auctions that have had really? one item, and it's been like an entire garage full of comic books. Okay. So their only minimum is the three hundred dollar fee. So you get to choose how many things you want to put in. Uh -huh. We, at, we okay. average around one hundred and fifty. Okay. Because okay. we had an auctioneer come in, and he wanted to do. He was like, "Oh, one hundred and fifty works good." And I'm like, "Yeah, but we got like five hundred things." And you know, because we've seen auctions where. Honestly, it's a junky thing. When I sit down and I see that there's 486 lots in an online auction, yeah. I'm like, make the coffee. I'm ready. Let's look. Let's shop. <laughs> yeah. 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 And we've, we've tried not to put too much things in the same areas as well. So we try not to throw like 80 different pieces of glass on one thing because you might end up right. with a dollar on it. So you, in some yeah. cases, you do split those pieces. Uh, we've actually seen, Melissa asked if there's an amount you can, at maximum amount. No, we've seen people list about four or 500 items on a couple of the auctions. But again, the challenge there is that's a lot for you if you're a reseller to actually manage. So can you, you got to think that side too. You got to hold Sorry. this pickup and you got people who are going to come to your place. So, but you're allowed to do another great thing they do is you can set your items with an A, B and a C time slot. So if you have a lot of items, you can say, I want all my big items to be picked up at the end. So you can set your times accordingly so that someone's Ooh. got a chair they're not coming I right at the beginning it. and picking the chair up and blocking the day, like the way through. They're always at the end. So, as the as the business that's always picking up the big stuff, I love that idea. Yeah. Now, and Paul um, was asking about collecting taxes. They collect and pay all the sales tax directly at Max Sold. You get not you're dealing only in a net amount. So, are are you allowed to set a reserve on high priced, expensive things that no. you think should go? Oh. Not yet. Okay. I'm begging them to do that, but not yet. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's kind of a gamble, you know. Yeah. If it needs to reserve, it kind of needs to go worldwide. I think that, I think that you never know. Um, as things move forward with more and more resellers on their platform, I think they may be they may start adapting a few things because they were based as a clear out estate place. They were everything has to go. That's their whole mantra. And now on the reseller side, it's a little bit different of a mantra. Can you meet other places besides your house? Yes, you can have it done anywhere you want. So we know people who rent a storage locker. Yep, we know people who've just rented a storage locker just for that. So they've done all the pictures at their house. They rented a storage locker for a day, loaded everything in on the Saturday, and had everybody pick up on the Sunday. There you go. Well, that was a quick thirty minutes. Holy crap! But we, uh, Craig has uh, has a deal for us. Right. Yeah. The when in talking with uh, the 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 guys from Maxold, the great thing is um, Sushi, their uh, um, CEO, and I were talking, and we're going to. I was trying to say we need to get a way to get resellers to try in here more. So what they've done is they've actually going to give us a hundred dollars off for anybody who's doing their very first sale with Maxold. So normally, if you were going to do a thousand dollar sale, 
like you do a sale with Max and you sell as a retailer, reseller, you would pay $300 or 30%, whatever is higher. Now, if you get that thousand dollars, you're going to get a hundred dollar rebate back. So really it's now oh, or $300 or higher. So that's like, that's unheard of like, like to have that one third off, but it's a really great way for somebody who might be a little more scared to think, wow, I'm not sure about it. 30%. It's, it's kind of high. Well, now it's really 20%. On the you first, know, 30%, 30 ain't bad. I know we had uh, some Max Holden mm -hmm. in the chat, so thank you for that. That mm -hmm. is awesome. And uh, I saw and, some people yeah. that, like, ooh, that's awesome. So yeah, Max Holden, uh, thanks for the follow. They're doing it as well. So there, there's a couple of people who just started doing it in craft, and they've set the timing on it really well. So it, it, you don't have to do it right today, but you need to think about it. And the code would expire June 30th, and your auction would have to happen by June 30th as well. So think about I'm it. Ready. You can sign up. Your sign up doesn't have your date on it. So your sign up is just like, yes, I want to do it. And then once you actually go live, you can, you set your date. So you can say, I'm going to sign up tomorrow and you can wait until like May 20th to do your auction. You got six weeks to take pictures. You got time to learn. And the thing that I've said, and I've offered this to the people in craft and I'll offer it to anybody else too, because we just think it's a, it's an amazing platform for us. I am here to be a mentor to anybody who needs help on thinking about Max Sold. I'm on the thrifting board in the group. If you've got any questions, really, just email me. Just PM me or just set, and I will answer anything that you need to have answered. I'm trying to actually build a couple of quick videos, too, to help people through their first ones. Because I think it's a great system. It's a great system. Yeah, it's we've, awesome. All right. We've done a similar. It's great. We got to run because we got an after show to do for the secret beachcombers. So head over to the other link, beachcombers, and we'll see you there. Everyone else, thank you very much. Have Here's a good night, everybody. If you want to give it a try, Thrift. And like Craig said, feel free to message him, uh, post a question in craft, post a question on the thrifting board. We will be very happy to help. And uh, I can't wait for it to get to Las Vegas. So, Max Salt employees, Las Vegas, please. <laughs> Bye guys. Wait. Yeah, we've got our auction on tonight. It's closing in 10 minutes. And right now we have 163 items and we're over $2,000 already on those items. And the last 15 minutes are when it just can go absolutely crazy. We're over three minutes. We're over if you haven't been to an auction, get All in right. there and Great watch. Summers. Head over there. That's where we're headed next. Bye. If everybody. you're not on here, just go to Max Old. Look up Toronto and find Two Dogs Digs. We're 705 Progress. That's our auction. You can watch it live yourself. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.